welcome. The Inferior Five is a quintessential 60s humor comic book. It has a quirky, slightly campy charm, and the comedy is, well, very much of its time. Which means some of its references are rather dated and haven't aged well. The team debuted in Showcase number 62, and they would have two more appearances in that anthology before graduating to their own solo series for a 10-issue bi-monthly run. By the time the 10th and final issue was published, interest in oddball, humorous titles had faded away. The original inspiration for the team was to be a direct parody of the Fantastic Four. This was conceived by the editor, Jack Miller, who also provided the team its name. He then assigned the writing to E. Nelson Bridwell, who had previously written for Mad Magazine. Bridwell changed the concept to focus on a team of incompetent children of retired superheroes. Thus the Inferior Five have an odd, trivial significance. They are possibly the first and one of the only teams composed of children of former superheroes. Now here's where the Inferior Five achieve a few levels of metatextuality. The parents of the Inferior Five were all gentle parodies of Golden Age DC characters. These parents were all retired members of the Freedom Brigade. The Freedom Brigade may be an indirect reference to the Justice League of America, which was a successful contemporary reboot of the Golden Age team, the Justice Society of America. Merryman, who was originally going to be named Wonderful, is the son of Patriot and Lady Liberty, who were primarily based on Uncle Sam and Miss America, respectively. For the record, these weren't originally DC characters. They were purchased by DC when the original publisher, Quality Comics, went out of business. Although it should be noted, Patriot and Lady Liberty were a blend of all the highly patriotic wartime heroes from the Golden Age. Awkward Man is the son of Mr. Might and the Mermaid. Mr. Might is based on Superman, and the Mermaid is likely a reference to Lori Lamaris, the one-time girlfriend of Superman. The Blimp is the son of Captain Swift, who is possibly based on The Flash, but he may also be based on the more obscure Golden Age character, Johnny Quick. Johnny's power was to fly at super speed, while the Blimp only hovers at very slow speeds. Basically, both fly, unlike The Flash, who runs at super speed. White Feather is the son of the Bowman, who was based on Green Arrow. Finally, Dumb Bunny is the daughter of Princess Power, who is based on Wonder Woman. The team is brought together because a mad scientist, Dr. Gruesome, is planning a crime spree. The Freedom Brigade is contacted for help, but since they've retired, they pass that responsibility onto their children. Thus, the Inferior Five are assembled for their very first adventure. From there, they engage in a series of disjointed, wacky misadventures. For the most part, it's tame slapstick involving five individuals who are simply terrible at what they do. Of course, in the end, despite their incompetence, the bad guy is captured and the citizens of Megalopolis, the city they've sworn to protect, are once again safe and secure. For the most part, the comic is a gentle, inoffensive parody of pop culture. As one might presume, there are some superhero parodies, but not as many as one might expect. The most notable inclusion is the kooky quartet, an obvious parallel to the Fantastic Four. Another obvious parody is from the second appearance in Showcase number 63. Here the team face Brute Brainard, aka Man Mountain, a boxer who turns into a super strong green goliath after being exposed to Phi Beta Kappa rays. While not exclusively considered superheroes, Tarzan and Thor also get the inferior five treatment. Perhaps one of the most bizarre issues of the entire run is the sixth issue. The whole point of the story is to give readers a look at the wacky shenanigans that go on behind the scenes at DC. It really reads like DC trying to duplicate the success of Marvel Comics, who successfully perpetuated the myth that their office was a wild party every day. Although Mad Magazine also had this aura of wackiness, except, well, Mad allegedly was an actual office party every day. Regardless, this issue of the Inferior Five definitely doesn't feel authentic, and if one were to choose a moment where the series jumped the shark, this issue would probably be that moment. The final issue of the series is a superhero parody extravaganza. There's Superman, Spider-Man, Namor, and the entire Fantastic Four, all of whom gather to stop an alien invasion. Any attempt to disguise these parallels, other than changing their names, is completely dropped. This issue also contains what may be the most unintentionally ironic final panel in comic book history. It ends with the Inferior Five about to be tarred and feathered by the Marvel heroes. Obviously, this wasn't intended to be a metaphor, but it does reflect how Marvel Comics regularly punished DC for their inability to be hip and relevant like they were. 
The avatar of this failure was the inferior five, who would bear this indignity while being cancelled at the same time. In terms of the worst ending possible, this was the inferior five's fate. Following the cancellation of the original series in 1968, the inferior five fell into the deepest, darkest corner of comic book obscurity. This was a fate seemingly shared by other humor titles from that era, like Swing with Scooter, Stanley and His Monster, and Angel and the Ape. The series itself would be briefly revived in 1972 for two issues. However, those issues were merely reprints of their first two showcase appearances. Presumably, sales didn't justify a reboot of the series. The team only had one more appearance in the 70s, and that was a cameo in showcase number 100 from 1976. In 1985, after almost a decade of no appearances whatsoever, the Inferior Five would experience a brief reprieve from obscurity. They showed up in the background of the final issue of Crisis on Infinite Earths. They also appeared for one page in Ambush Bug Number 3, and they would have an appearance in the final panel of the Oz Wonderland War. But that would be it for the team until 1990. Grant Morrison would include them in a very heartfelt appearance in Animal Man Number 25. In this appearance, Merry Man is somewhat a spokesman for all the ideas that were discarded and shelved following the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths. The following year, 1991, the team would be included in the Angel and the Ape miniseries. It establishes, in a somewhat convoluted but sensible manner, that Angel and Dumb Bunny are actually sisters. At some time in the mid-90s, Steve Gerber, who is best known for Howard the Duck, proposed an Inferior Five miniseries that would satirize the current grim and gritty trend. However, that proposal was rejected, and he wrote the Nevada miniseries instead. Obscurity's hold on the Inferior Five was pretty strong. The team would disappear until 2003, having a minor background appearance in a one-shot JLA comic written by Patton Oswalt. There's a subtle one-panel appearance of the team in Villains United No. 4 from 2005. These are extreme 90s versions of the characters intended to be nothing more than a joke. While not specified in that issue, they have been subsequently named the Superior Five. Finally, in 2010, the Inferior Five would have an actual appearance in Brave and the Bold No. 35. Along with the Legion of Substitute Heroes, they try to prevent a disaster in time, which does not end well at all. By the end of that issue, the team has been transported from 1972, the year that coincides with the half-hearted attempt to reboot the series with reprints, into the year 2010. Presumably, should anyone desire, the Inferior Five were available for use in modern times. Of course, that didn't occur. At the same time, the team had a brief appearance in the 17th issue of the all-ages version of The Brave and the Bold. And, once again, obscurity called. The team has not been heard from since. The Inferior Five are being revived in September of 2019, with a 12-issue miniseries co-written by Keith Giffen and Jeff Lemire. According to the solicitation, the team will consist of misfits that notice strange goings-on following the summer crossover event from 1988, Invasion. This appears to be an entirely new take on the Inferior Five, and probably won't include the original members. In the end, one has to ask, did the Inferior Five deserve a better fate than to land in obscurity along with Angel and the Ape, Scooter, and Stanley and his monster? Quite honestly, no. The Inferior Five and the other aforementioned titles are an artifact from a bygone era. Certainly, they are interesting as relics, and they do have a specific charm, but they are very much trapped in the era of their creation. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.